Hi, and welcome back to MRTV. This is the brand new HTC Vive Focus 3, HTC's high-end standalone headset aimed at enterprise customers. And in this video, I'm going to unbox it, I'm going to put it on, and I'm going to give you my very first impressions of the device. So absolutely stay tuned, watch the whole video, because all of this goodness is coming up. Welcome back to MRTV, my name is Sebastian Ang, and of course, if you've not yet subscribed to the channel, absolutely do that now. All right, this is the Focus 3 and the controllers, so let's start with the unboxing, and let's start here with the controller. And that does look very familiar, right? It does look like the Oculus Touch controller, just the only difference, well, a longer grip. Also, we do not have a battery to exchange, but you would charge this via USB-C. Other than that, everything is the same, only the trigger has a click at the end, also the grip has a click at the end, and that's actually pretty nice. Build quality is top notch. If you come from the Oculus headsets, you won't feel a difference here, it's really good. So, here are both of the controllers. And also, again, checking all the buttons, how they feel, how they click, and yeah, everything feels top-notch. And it's kind of nice that there is a click in the end of the trigger and also at the grip button. How about the longer grip? Does it have any advantages? Well, let me directly compare that now with the Oculus Touch controller of the Quest 2. So here we see them on the right, the Oculus Touch controller of the Quest 2. I think it feels great. I personally do like the Quest 2 controller and, well, in terms of how they feel, I wouldn't say that the longer grip would give you big advantages. And I do have already bigger hands than the standard person probably, but, well, probably for some people that might be an advantage. It's not a disadvantage, that's for sure. So now let's weigh them. The Focus 3 controller weighs in at 145 gram and the touch controller of the Quest 2 at 150 grams. So yes, the Focus 2 controllers are a bit lighter. Now, this here is the power cable, and it's not USB-C, and you will see in a moment why, because actually, you directly connect this to the battery so that you can also externally charge the battery and you're not dependent on the headset, and that's great. Also in the box, these USB-C chargers for the controllers, so you can charge them at the same time. And now let's get to the main event, the Focus 3. And wow, the first thing when you get this out of the box is simply wow. It's so high-end, it's so sleek and beautiful. And I would even say that this is the most beautiful VR headset that I've ever had in my hands. And once you get it out of the box, it is surprisingly light. And the reason for this might be the material that's being used. This is not plastic. This is a very light magnesium alloy material. And it weighs in at around 570 gram. However, this is still without the battery. We're going to get to the battery in a moment. Holding it and feeling it, you will feel that everything is just high end. So let's have a closer look now. Here on the right side, we have a USB-C connection. Then we have a headphone port if you want to use your own headphones. Then we have four cameras here at the sides for the tracking. Then here in the middle top of the device, we have a ventilation shaft for the active cooling of the XR2 chipset. And of course, that very reflective part in the front of the headset. Now, let's have a look at what else we find here. So we have a button here on the left, and I thought there was the on button, but actually it's not. You have to turn on the device at the battery at the back. Then this is a loudspeaker here, and of course, on the other side you have the two, so it's kind of an open ear loudspeaker, just the same as with the Quest. Then here in the back of the device, we have the adjustment knob to adjust the headset for the different head sizes. Feels great to use that knob. And you can tell that they thought about every single part of this headset very carefully. Then we have another button here, and this is to release the battery. I'm going to show you that in a moment. Now, the back padding, as well as the face gasket, they are both attached via a magnet. And these are those little details which make this headset simply stand out. Now, once you detach it, there's room for the battery, and I'm going to show you the battery right now. This is the battery, and it weighs 200 gram. 
and you would charge it directly with the power adapter. So you don't need the headset itself. And that is, of course, great for location-based businesses. You can have somebody use the headset and then at the same time charge a spare battery. And this is how simple it is to put in the new battery. You can do that, you can change the battery within a few seconds. So overall, very well thought through and simply perfect for enterprise customers. Also in general, I prefer the design when the battery is in the back of the headset because that will help the headset to feel balanced when you wear it and not front heavy at all. Lenses and panels are the same like in the Vive Pro 2. So you have that super high resolution of 2.5K by 2.5K pixels per eye. And you also have that wider FOV that we see in the Pro 2. So the face gasket also can be detached. I mentioned that already. And here are the magnets that would hold the face gasket. So I'm looking forward to see many different aftermarket gaskets. Probably we see some with a thinner pad to have more FOV. And here, this part is where you would slot in an SD card if you need more memory. For example, putting in more videos or apps or whatever. Then, of course, we have the manual IPD adjustment. Really important for people who don't have the average IPD like I do. You can get up to 72 millimeters and that is good. Here's the volume rocker and here a new microphone. Yes, finally a new microphone. And I can already tell you, yes, that microphone finally sounds great. Probably this is the first for a Vive headset. <laughs> okay, so the nose flaps here of the gasket, they are very soft. And I will tell you in a moment how it feels to wear the Focus 3. Now for the face padding, it is made of some kind of PU leather, I would say. And also here, that is perfectly geared at enterprise customers who have to yeah, clean that after each customer. And for that, that is perfect, of course. What I can tell you already, there's lots of space between eyes and lenses. So that is made for people who wear glasses. But if you need to get closer to the lenses to gain more FOV, probably you will need another face gasket. So overall, in terms of build quality, this is a wonderful headset. It is so high end and simply holding it in your hands, you will feel that. Let's compare that now with the Quest 2. This is the Quest 2 with the Elite battery strap. And you can tell it is a bit bigger here, the Focus 3 on the right. And overall, of course, you can tell the difference in build quality. And well, you better should be able to see it because the Focus 3 cost $1,400 and the Quest, as you know, only $299. So the Focus 3 clearly aimed at business customers. All right, so here it is, the Focus 3. And my very first reaction after unboxing this, even having not started it, wow. <laughs> It is so beautiful. It's so desirable, actually. Wow, I don't even know where to start. This, the front, looks cool with this very shiny part. Although, of course, it's going to absorb your fingerprints like a magnet, that's for sure. But also this magnesium alloy. It is just like, well, first of all, it looks great. It looks better than simply plastic. And also it feels so light. Well, now I've put the battery inside, then, then it's not so light anymore, right? It's, it's very standard now. But um, if it's just for this outer shell, it is very, very light. And the good thing is that the battery is here in the back part that can easily be changed. And because you have the battery, the 200 gram battery in the back, now you have this very, very balanced kind of design. And well, now it's time to do the thing that I always do with these, with these um, yeah, unboxings. I'm putting this on now and I'm letting you know my thoughts about how the headset feels on my head. So let me do that now. So first of all, of course, you would adjust the size here. Okay. So now already it sits on my head like a hat and I would just adjust it here with a knob. And wow, it feels, it feels great. That's, that's what I can say right now. 
it feels super balanced. Let me like adjust this a bit here. Okay. Yeah, great. It feels very, very balanced. I don't have light leakage now. Yeah, so, so this part, the nose flaps, they work really well. And let me, let me just see how, how strongly I can attach it. Yes. This is good. This is really good. And of course, I need to, I need to test it. I will definitely turn it on also within this video. But the first impressions <laughs> are really, really good. Really, really nice. Yeah, like, like I told you um, before, the back part, it's the same material that the PSVR has at the front part. And you can simply take it off. It feels magnetic and I'm sure it is also. And then this is the battery that you could easily replace if you want. Also here, the front also like this. And yeah, I'm sure there will be lots of third party solutions because I can tell already that this face gasket will put your eyes in quite a distance to the lenses. So I'm sure there's going to be one that's going to put your eyes closer to the lenses to gain more FOV. That's the first thing that I directly saw after, well, after I got these very good results with the Vive Pro, getting closer to the lenses, I'm sure this is going to happen here as well. Yeah, but first impressions about build quality, about the quality in general of that material, about looks, wow, it is really nice. And you know what I have to do now? I have to turn it on for the first time. All right, and now here we are in the Focus 3. And you have no idea how long it took me to make this screen recording happening, but I made it happen. So how does this look here? So we are in this kind of nice environment and uh, well, yeah, it does look nice. Mm, well, what you want to know, of course, now, how about the visuals? How about the tracking? And I know you're concerned about the tracking because of the Cosmos tracking. So let's start with that first. Tracking. It uses infrared tracking just like the Quest. And I'm happy to tell you that the tracking is wonderful. It is absolutely on point. And I cannot feel any kind of difference as compared to Quest tracking. And that is a big win after how the Cosmos tracking was like, right? So occlusion works fine. I can do all kinds of things that I couldn't do with the Cosmos tracking. I can do everything that I can also do well on Quest. And the nice thing also for the tracking volume, check, check the laser that's coming out here, right? I can't see the controllers anymore, but as you can tell by looking at the laser, it's still perfectly tracked, even though I'm out of my personal field of view. So tracking is great. How close can I get to the headset? I can touch it. I can touch the headset and it's still tracking. So they have done an amazing job here with the tracking. That is good to know. So with this out of the way, let's check out further here what we have here. First of all, let me tell you about the visuals. Exactly the same lenses, exactly the same panels like on the Pro 2. And well, that is good news. Well, not so much for the lenses because for the lenses, again, I had to find the sweet spot for quite a time. And then when I was in the sweet spot, yes, then I'm fine and then I have good clarity real good clarity and well, I don't see any kind of screen door effect. The quality does look better than on Quest 2. We have that higher resolution of 2.5 by 2.5K pixels and yeah, it looks great. It looks it just like on the Pro 2 on the extreme settings with the full native resolution here though at 90 Hertz. So that is really good. Also in terms of the field of view, it is wider than the Quest 
it is exactly like the Pro 2. So you have that wider horizontal field of view. And um, yeah, the horizontal FOV is wider than the vertical one. And well, I'm perfectly used to it already. And that is good. It looks good. You have more field of view. Colors look also, they look just they look just as good as on the Pro 2. So that is a win. Anyways, let's have a look here at the menu stuff and all these kind of things. So we have store, we have library, we have settings, and we have profile. It's very straightforward. So let's click on store, and then you have that Vive Business App Store, and well, you have some staff picks, collaboration tools, you have some, some things for entertainment, like also some games, and you can view more. Education. So this is not a gaming app store, right? But well, yeah, for, for enterprise customers, this is exactly right. And you will find the stuff that you're looking for here in this store. Right, that's the store. And you also have the store in your app. And the app, well, it's very close to what the Quest offers. Also, for the setup process that I didn't show you here, it's exactly the same like on the Quest. Well, library. Okay, so for me, a few things were pre-installed here. The tutorial, which we're going to have a look at in a moment. Um, some other apps, body swap, and here again, Hyperdash. We're going to look into this in a moment, and I'm going to let you know what I think. Then we have settings. We have all the different settings here. Yeah, general, yeah, right, language, and so on and so forth. Boundary. That is probably interesting to show you as well, right? So how would you set up your boundary and all these kind of things? Well, let me show you. It's exactly the same like on the Quest. Set the floor level. Let me click on it. Okay, that is... Now, let's set up your environment. That is my studio. First... Check to make sure your virtual floor matches your real floor. It does. Okay. Confirm. And yeah, that's it. Same thing like on the Quest. Boundary. Okay. Now you see how it looks now like Now let's here. set your boundaries. You shouldn't see that. Boundaries okay. define the edge of your virtual area. To create your virtual area boundary, point the ray cast at the floor where you'd like to begin. Then press and hold the trigger to start. Now, let's confirm that your virtual area... Use the arrow to set a direction that feels forward. Okay, so what you also saw is that the pass-through is just as bad looking as on the Quest, unfortunately. Yeah, right. Boundary color, blah, blah, connectivity, controller, hand tracking. Well, this is something for developers. There was no app to use it. Network, I'm connected to my Wi-Fi, and kiosk mode. That is really good. That is really good for enterprise customers, right? Who don't want their customers um, to, to see all those details. They can assign one content, and that one content is only available. And that is good. And then you can also, yeah, set a passcode protection so that the customers cannot get out of it network permissions. So that is very well thought through for enterprise customers. That is simply perfect. Storage, yep, that is the apps that are there right now. There's a file browser, and there's also some advanced stuff. So pretty, pretty straightforward, actually. Pretty straightforward. My profile, yep, that's right. And yeah, okay. Okay, I have some special offers here. All right. Go to library. Yeah, why don't I show you the tutorial? Let's do that. Oh wow, colors look so good. That reminds me a bit of the Oculus tutorial. For the music start at least. And it's well done. That I can tell you. It is very cool and well done. And yeah, also here I can tell you the contrast 
the blacks are really dark and the colors are without a doubt better than on quest 2. this is wow this is really good and together with the wider FOV, this is just nice okay well done so this is a very cool sequence and now okay there's a wearing guide and a, a controller guide but i don't need to show you that what i want to do now i'm going to jump into hyper dash and i'm simply going to let you know about my thoughts so i do see i do see god rays now like white on black right we know this and unfortunately the same exact lenses like on the Pro 2. Yeah, okay. So let's, what do we do? Um, well, first of all, let me tell you how that looks here. So it looks fantastic. It looks just as good as on the Pro 2 at the extreme settings with the native resolution. And, and that together with that wider field of view is really cool really cool to have this as a wireless standalone headset that is cool anyways let's um have a just let's let me just do let me just do the tutorial and probably not even the whole one just want to have a look into it welcome to hyperdash let's start and now training. i'm not streaming anymore Oh, I'm Use still streaming. the joystick to move okay. yourself towards the checkpoint. Good. You're right. We know Hyper Dash. Move towards. Press and hold the dash button to indicate and your dash location. Yeah. It's just so cool to have this in a standalone headset, you know? Press the button to continue it, to the next It feels room. like this PC VR graphics. You can hold now, the sprint button inside to move of a standalone faster. headset. Sprint and that is great. And dashing burns energy. Let's test your aim. Okay, Shoot let's the test the aim. All right. I simply want to show you some some gunplay here and again, the tracking the tracking is perfect. Really really perfect. Yeah. Very cool. Charge your weapons by holding the triggers. Charged shots and yeah. deal more damage and bounce off walls. Yeah, it's great. It really, really simply is fantastic. And to have the game here on a standalone headset with this Let's kind of graphic fidelity. That is cool. Pick up the sniper that is really next good. To you. Destroy the remaining targets. And here we go. Yep. Press the All right. button to continue. Let's get out of this. And I can get out of the game by clicking on the menu button. Okay, I'm casting right now. Okay. Actually, I want to go back to the lobby. So. Yep. Very cool. So, that all is good. That all is actually great. But, there is one thing that is kind of like holding back my enthusiasm. And that is that in these kind of situations, right now in the lobby, where I don't hear audio, where there's no music, where there's actually nothing, I can hear the fan. And... When I first put on the headset, that was yesterday, I thought something's wrong with the device. I thought, well, the loudspeaker was faulty because I heard that noise, that static. And, I, and then, unfortunately, I found out, wow, that is actually the fan that is blowing out air and I can hear it. So that was so bad, actually, that I wrote to HUC and asked them, hey, what's going on here? Is that only my device? And then they told me, hey, there's going to be an over-the-air firmware update. 
And that made it better. That made it better. And the fan was not blasting out at full speed all the time. Now it's already better, but now it's the speed of the fan changes quite often. It's not very smooth. And that absolutely does, yeah, well, cause a problem for me. And they need to improve that. If it wasn't for that, if it wasn't for that problem, I would be completely amazed. But this is a problem that we have to talk about, and I'm going to talk about it more in the end of this video, but we still have to try out a few things. All right, what I also want to show you is streaming PC VR content, but in order to record my screen, I'm also casting, and it doesn't play together, I found out. So about that, I simply have to tell you about now, and once the standard screen recording works, I'm going to show you that on my channel. So let's talk about the device now. All right, let's get to the conclusion of my first impressions of the Focus 3. But before I get to that, let's talk about the PC VR streaming that I couldn't show you just now. So how does PC VR streaming work? Well, there are two methods, first of all, with a cable, with a USB-C cable, just like Oculus Link. Actually, I used my Oculus Link cable and that worked fine. You have to install some kind of streamer app on your desktop, just like with virtual desktop. Then you connect it and then you start the business streaming application and then you are in Steam VR Home and then, well, you simply do your Steam VR thing. How well does it work? It works really well. So you can choose different kind of quality settings. I chose the highest one with a native resolution at 90 hertz and yeah, it looked fantastic. I couldn't feel lag. It just felt as if I'm using a PC VR headset, as if I would be using the Vive Pro 2, but with this nicer setup here with, yeah, with that better looking device, which also feels great on the head. So that was great. I couldn't feel latency. I played 11 table tennis. I played Beat Saber. Everything worked really fine. So PC VR streaming via cable, thumbs up. Now this also already has the wireless streaming capability and that is still in beta. And I can understand why, because it did work, but here in my network that I also use for Quest streaming, I have a Huawei Wi-Fi 6 router, the Router 3, and compared to Quest streaming via Airlink and Virtual Desktop, this still doesn't work as well. It also worked, but I had more stuttering here. It was just okay-ish and uh, in direct comparison, it could not compete against Airlink or Virtual Desktop. So HTC has to work harder on this. Probably think about um, working together with Guy Godin from Virtual Desktop. That would for sure be amazing. So that is still not good enough yet in my opinion. But well, we're very early. It's just the second day that I'm using the Focus 3. So now let's get to my overall conclusions for this headset. So first of all, this is a beauty and this is a really fantastic standalone headset. This is, in my opinion, the best standalone headset for business customers. It is just, first of all, it's super sleek, it's nice, it's beautiful, but more important for business customers is that it's kind of rugged. Somehow I would say that, right? You can sweat into the device. Check out this kind of material here. Right, it's it's easy to, to clean. If somebody sweats into it, okay, you can just wipe it. Same thing here for this kind of material. Also, you can simply wipe it clean or even better, you can simply replace it magnetically and this is also true for the back. This is also magnetically, right, attached. So that is great, perfect for business, perfect for location-based businesses doing something cool, some arcades or what, and of course, perfect that you can simply swap the battery. I think this is a killer feature for arcades or for anything that uses this professionally because, well, if the battery is gone, what do you do? You simply get it out. <laughs> Here it is. You replace it with a new one and you can charge this one while it's outside of the headset. 
So yeah, it is great. It is just perfect for arcades. And um, I'm so looking forward to see this device with these amazing visuals, the great balance, the great comfort in a location-based virtual reality arcade. I can't wait for this. If you set this up, please do let me know. I want to visit your location and check it out. And of course, also great is that finally we have great tracking with these controllers. So first of all, the controllers, they feel just as good as Oculus Touch controllers with a longer grip. Why not? Yeah, that is okay. And well, the only difference is that there's no battery, so you have to charge those. And well, that depends on you. If you prefer this for me, that's okay. But I also actually like batteries because you can simply exchange it just like that battery, right? So yeah, you have to think about what is important for you and if this is important for you and if this works for you. The tracking is fantastic, just as good as Quest, probably even a bigger um, tracking volume. It's really good. It is absolutely fantastic. So that is good. Uh, occlusion, everything is great. Works works fantastic. So I would say for business customers, this is a no-brainer. Now the question, of course, how about enthusiasts? You are an enthusiast. Should you pick up this here instead of the Vive Pro 2, for example, or instead of the Reverb G2 or whatever? Well, this is a different kind of story because there is one drawback to this otherwise really nice headset. And that drawback is the fan noise. So I told you about it when I was just in the headset and the fan, when I first started it, the headset, it was way too loud. It was always blowing with full power and it was just like, I thought it's the, the, the device is defective. After the firmware update, they changed it and now it's not always full power, but it does wear up, it, does, it goes up right, with the rotations and then goes down again and that is distracting, honestly speaking. If you don't plan to play with headphones and the good thing is that you can attach your headphones to the device, if you don't want to do that, then, well, this is distracting. This is, honestly speaking, dist distracting in situations where there's no audio. If you are in a game, you won't hear it. But if there are situations that are quiet, when you're in the menu and well, then you will hear it. And in my opinion, for this kind of price, $1,400, you could expect a headset that doesn't have this kind of problem, right? <laughs> the, the Quest, it costs $299 and it does not have this problem. So yes, probably the XR2 chipset in the Quest does not have as much power as this device, but honestly speaking, it is still powerful enough and I'd rather have a device that does not have this kind of fan noise rather than having a fan noise headset, <laughs> right? So this is unfortunately a drawback. So for enthusiasts, as long as this problem is not solved, and I still think they can do a lot with firmware updates. Yeah, in my prior life, I was a firmware engineer. I think they can still do something about it. They can still optimize it, right? Have it like not so easily change the gears <laughs> and um, and yeah, just optimize it a lot. They must do that because otherwise, in my opinion, that is unfortunately a pretty big drawback of the Focus 3 and therefore right now, I would not recommend it for enthusiasts who want to pick it up instead of something like the Vive Pro 2. But well, this is only my first impression video after two days of using it. So things might change. Probably they can make a better firmware that uses the fan in better ways, way less perhaps. So we will have to wait. In my full review, I'll give you my full assessment after using it for longer. Also, I will include, of course, the Steam VR streaming via cable and wireless in that full review. And it's something that you can look forward to. But I believe that after this early look, after my first impressions, you already get a very good idea of the Focus 3, a really, really desirable headset. If it wasn't for that annoying fan noise, if you're not using headphones. So that is something that I must tell you. So let's hope for the HTC firmware engineers to do an amazing job on that.
And that's it for my first impressions on the Focus 3. I really hope that you enjoyed it and it was helpful for you. If yes, give it a thumbs up. Up. And of course, if you have not yet subscribed to Emirates TV, then absolutely do that now and click on the bell button so that you don't miss anything. Also, if you want more content from me, then become a member of the Emirates TV Elite at EmiratesTVElite.com. That is my Patreon channel and you get so much more content. For example, members of the Emirates TV Elite knew about my first impressions way earlier than you and that's only for $1. So if you love independent XR reports like this one here, then supported by becoming a member of the MRTV Elite. That's everything that I got for this video. Now I want to hear from you. Make some noise for the algorithm and leave me a comment. What do you think about the Focus 3? Please leave me a comment. And now I'm looking forward to see you in the next episode and in the comment section. Bye-bye.